this is the 2024 Fiat E. It is, in no particular order, the smallest, cheapest, and almost assuredly the cutest battery-powered electric vehicle in Canada. It is also the slowest, the smallest, as in small interior, and boasts the least range of any battery-powered electric vehicle in Canada. The Fiat 500e has a 42 kilowatt hour battery. That's the total uh, amount of lithium ions it has on board. It actually can use 37.3 of them. At 125 kilometers an hour in my rangefinder tests, that means it can go 195 kilometers on a tank full, if you will. That's just about the shortest maximum range I've ever tested. Actually, it is the very shortest, and it's the shortest by about 45 or 50 kilometers. In other words, you're probably not doing any long distance trips on this car. One more interesting observation. The 500E is the lightest EV is sold in Canada, which means that it should be also one of its most efficient. And certainly when you do the numbers, 37.3 kilowatt hours, 195 kilometers of range, you come up with 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is actually quite efficient compared to a typical SUV, uh, which can range between 25 and 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Okay. However, despite being tiny and having no power and at least looks very streamlined, the 500E isn't as efficient as something like Lucid's real wheel drive air, which actually averaged about 1.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers less than the 500EV, despite it being almost as big as a Mercedes S-Class and has a trunk big enough that it could probably swallow the uh, 500e whole. My point in all of that is that the things that make uh, EVs efficient, things like 800 volt and 900 volt high-tech batteries, efficient motors, uh, uh, more high-tech inverters, these the trickle down of that technology to the lower echelons, to the cheap EVs that we're all waiting for, it seems to be a little bit slower than the type of trickle down we expect from ICEs. So, it's not automatic that just being smaller makes an EV more efficient. The other thing that is important in this equation is charging. Uh, the 500 e its peak charging is at 85 kilowatts. That's not so high when you hear about Porsche Taycans um, uh, peaking at 325. The new Lotus Amaya is 485. Doesn't sound fast at all. On the other hand, it is faster charging than say a 2020 BMW i3 once the harbinger of a, of a slew of small and compact EVs. And in fact, you know, considering all the hullabaloo we're hearing about the wonderful and cheap um, Chinese EVs, it's almost exactly the same maximum charging that a BYD Dolphin can boast. On the other hand, what it means is it'll be a some time before we have really fast charging on uh, small EVs. Okay, bottom line is that it takes about 30, 35 minutes to do a 10 to 80% charge on the 500E, which will get you about 120 kilometers more of range. Uh, in other words, you can go 200 kilometers on a, the first tank full, and basically after that, you're stopping for half an hour every hour. In other words, no one, at least no one sentient, is going to be using a 500E to cross Canada. It's not a road warrior, it's very much a city vehicle. One of the other numbers uh, that matters here 
is that the 500D has 117 horsepower. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it is six more horsepower than the previous version that of the 500 electric vehicle that Fiat brought to Canada. So uh, a little bit of an improvement. More importantly, it's actually quite perky. Fiat, for instance, says that it takes, I think it's 8.7 seconds to do zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, more than a few testers that have the equipment that I don't, I've said that it's probably at least a second faster to 100 kilometers than Fiat's uh, official claim. More importantly, it doesn't feel slow. In fact, it feels more uh, perkier or zippier than the Honda Prologue we tested uh, just a week ago, which uh, boasted 288 horsepower, as I remember, and couldn't get out of its own way. This one feels, other than off the line where you're expecting a whole bunch of zero RPM electric vehicle torque, It'll actually cruise at 130 kilometers an hour, which is all I really want to do in these, uh, you know, heavily policed Ontario roads. In other words, you can decide not to buy the 500E because of its paltry range, but don't dismiss it because you don't think it's going to be fast enough. It's plenty fast enough. mistaking this is a small car. That said, there's plenty of room for two. Honestly, the front seats on this um, Fiat are just as roomy as any other compact or subcompact car. So that said, there ain't much space in the back, you know. And the cargo space with all seats up is only 7.51, I think, cubic feet, which isn't a whole heck of a lot. That said, you drop down the seats, which unfortunately don't go completely flat, uh, you get quite a bit of room. To put it this way, two people doing the grocery shopping are not going to be wanting for space. On the other hand, a family of four, especially if you bring the kids with you, uh, aren't going to get enough groceries to last a week. The last thing about the interior that I'll say is it's quite attractive, the seats are comfortable, they're six-way adjustable, only manual, after all, this is supposed to be the cheapest TV in Canada. And that said though, the infotainment system is quite lovely. It's, you know, Stellantis's Uconnect is one of the best systems going, uh, uh, connects to your iPhone faster, re-ups when you get in the car faster, uh, displays CarPlay faster, and Unlike the CX-70 Mazda, which costs like twenty or thirty thousand dollars more, the screen has um, um, a touchscreen function. Again, Mazda didn't include that. So, from that point of view, it's not badly equipped. The radio, on the other hand, isn't so great. Of course, that has to do with the pricing. This, as I've said at least three or four times in this video, is the least expensive EV, or mainstream EV, if you will, uh, in Canada right now. At $39,995, I think, for this base um, version called the Red. Um, put that in perspective, um, the good news is, is if uh, the, it qualifies for the full 5,000 federal rebate, and if you live it in, in Quebec, at least until they start rolling back the subsidies, it, you'd get another seven thousand bucks. Okay, uh, in BC, it would be good for four thousand bucks. In other words, when you factor in the rebates, especially in those provinces, the 500e is extremely affordable. The counterpoint to that is it's forty thousand dollars which means it's about $10,000 more than a Honda Civic, or at least the uh, entry-level Honda Civic, which is a vastly superior car in every possible uh, manner. It, performance, range, uh, room, virtually any criteria you can judge, a Honda Civic is a vastly superior car to a 500e, except for, of course, emissions uh, output. What that means is we're still 
a long way from having a non-Chinese, in other words, a Western-produced compact EV that can, can compete directly with the ICE cars currently produced. How long that takes, whether we can ever do that or how long it will take, is a question that is probably best addressed in one of my motor mouth columns, but understand that without the rebates, as affordable comparatively as the 500E is to other battery electrics, it's still not cheap. Were I in a two-car family, either empty nester, uh, newly married, childless couple, or any other form of dink, as in double income, no kids, looking for a second car that would be just for the city, I could see no reason why not to buy the 500E. The, um, you'll save money perhaps in the long run, and if you're in um, uh, Quebec or BC, you'll start saving money right away uh, considering the rebates. It's a, the numbers with rebates and with the current cho- cost of uh, electricity make it a very, very handsome proposition. Probably the biggest problem facing the 500E, and I can't take credit for this one. This comes from a fellow driving contributor, Brian Harper, uh, in his road test of the 500. Is that, like so many sort of thematic cars, the new Beetle comes to mind. Once that initial surge of people who buy it, either because it's an EV or because it's so cute or for whatever reason, their long-term sales tend to flag afterwards. In other words, the 500 will probably, hopefully for Stellantis, do quite well in its first couple of years of sales. But if it follows the other um, trends of such cars, uh, it might not have uh, the longevity to be a real game changer for the EV industry. I'm David Booth for driving.ca.